Alright, so this video is going to be about the common iliac and the external iliac artery. And then the next video will be about the internal iliac artery, along with some tips on how to remember it easier. So, as you know, the abdominal aorta will continue downwards to approximate to the fourth lumbar vertebrae. And then it will divide into what is called the common iliac arteries. They will continue to approximate the sacroiliac joint, as you see here and then further divide into the external iliac and the internal iliac arteries. Now let's make a cross section and look at them both from this perspective to, you know, visualize them easier. Now from here we can finally focus on the external iliac artery. But first let's look at some important structures to go through. You're probably already familiar with these ligaments, but the inguinal ligament together with the iliopectinal arch, the pectinal ligament and the lacunal ligament will form two important canals. Now, what were these two canals called? Muscular and the vascular space, or in Latin, lacuna vasorum and lacuna musculorum. Good job if you remember these ones. The external iliac artery will run along the terminal line of the pelvic bone, as you see here, and then eventually go through the vascular space, where it will now become the femoral artery, which is going to be the main blood supply to the lower extremities. Let's now go through the side branches. There's really only going to be two side branches of the external iliac artery. The first one is the deep circumflex artery. This one arises from the distal end of the external iliac, as you see here. From its origin, it travels along the inguinal ligament and the iliac crest to supply the abdominal muscles of the anterior muscles of the pelvic girdle, like the psoas major and the minor, for example. The other branch of the external iliac is the inferior epigastric artery, which supplies the anterior wall of the abdominal cavity and as it ascends it forms a fold so let's look at how that works so here's basically the anterior abdominal wall with the rectus abdominis muscle here the urinary bladder here the prostate and the navel and then here on the side you'll see a fold called the lateral umbilical fold or pleatsa umbilicalis lateralis in latin and the reason why i'm showing you this is because the inferior epigastric artery will travel within this layer and then eventually communicate with the superior epigastric artery. So it travels uh, inside the this layer, the lateral umbilical fold, and then eventually communicate with the superior epigastric artery. So remember the subclavian artery gives off a large side branch called the internal thoracic artery, which descends along the thoracic wall, and then at around the seventh rib, it divides into the muscular phrenic, and the superior epigastric artery. So here we see the inferior epigastric ascending along the anterior abdominal wall to anastomose with the superior epigastric artery. Now the inferior epigastric has two side branches. One of them is common in both male and female and this one is the pubic branch. Now the pubic branch will run along the internal surface of the pubic bone and connect with another pubic branch of the internal iliac artery. So let's look a little bit into that. Here we see the external and the internal iliac arteries. The external iliac give off the inferior epigastric, while the internal iliac give off the obturator artery. Both of them has a side branch called the pubic branch, and when they connect, they get the name corona mortis, and the term corona mortis translates as the crown of death which indicates the importance of these structures in orthopedic surgery especially, um, because accidental damage to this structure can cause significant hemorrhaging, which may be difficult to then achieve hemostasis. You know, it must therefore be considered cautiously during surgery. So that's that one. Now, the other branch is on, found only in males, and this one is the cremasteric artery. It travels along the inguinal canal to supply a muscle called the cremasteric muscle found around the testis. Now, if you're a male, you're probably very aware of the function of this muscle. The cremaster muscle's function is to raise and lower the testis in order to regulate the scrotal temperature for um, optimal spermatogenesis and the survival of the resultant spermatozoa. The other artery is found only in female, and that is the artery of the round ligament of the uterus, or the arteria ligamentum teres uteri, uh, supplying a ligament called the round ligament of the uterus. It's a large ligament highlighted right here, and the function of this, uh, the function of the round ligament is to maintain the anteroflexion of the uterus. Um, it's a position where the fundus 
of the uterus is turned forward at the junction of the cervix and the uh, vagina, as you see here. And when the uterus grows during pregnancy, the round ligament can stretch and, and, and cause pain. But essentially, this ligament is important to keep the natural position of the uterus. So that's all I had for the external iliac artery. Um, as long as you remember these two side branches, you're more or less got a grasp of the external iliac. Next, let's do the internal iliac artery. Uh, 